So I've made up my mind. This bed here has never had onions growing in it. So I'm going to give that a go in the interest of not having any white rot damage. And this has got a few mares tails growing out of it. So it's going to be an opportunity to remove those as well. And then I'm going to put my very best onions or my favorite onions, which is Globo into the taller one because well, the shallots didn't grow quite so tall. They will hit this net, but it won't be the end of the world. But this one, the onions definitely won't get to the top. And as I say, my favorite onions, Globo, I just want them to be my sort of prize attempt at growing this year. Hopefully they'll be as big and as storable as they were last year, because they were fantastic. If you look back at my, well, one of my last couple of videos, you can see me show you one that I've stored and it's still in storage now. And they're absolutely fantastic. I don't know whether it was the temperatures throughout the winter, but I store them in a dark garage and they store perfectly. Right, got quite a bit of planting to do. Good times. the allotment gods were looking after me today. Absolutely perfect numbers to fill that bed with shallots. And I haven't wasted a single onion seedling. I've planted exactly what I've grown so far. So that's good. Right, just get the few weeds that are in this bed out and we'll start seeing if we can grow some sizable globo onions. Well, here they are. They are just amazing onions. They're already bigger than anything else. And they're just looking fantastic. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows of five. And if I split that in the middle and have one row there, I should be able to work my way out to the sides. That's the plan. Right, let's get this bed weeded and I can think about planting them. What have we got? 44 degrees in the polytunnel. Pretty warm. Right, flowers are coming out of here today because I'm getting ready for my carrots. So, one at a time. I think I'm going to put these outside on the patio. Right, let's go. That's quite a nice collection. So we've got some sweet peas which can go in our allotment flower bed. We've got two lots of cosmos and quite a lot of rubecchia. There's a few begonias there and some poppies that didn't get potted up. There's a few poppies along there. So quite a few plants to go out and around the house. So, or at least around the garden by the house. And Mrs. K is going to sort those out. It's more her thing than mine. Full surprise this morning. Look at these beautiful bluebells. Absolutely gorgeous. They're growing in and around all these black currants and raspberries. And I think they like the dappled light after all. Bluebells grow in woods very easily. But it's lovely to see them. And they are just such a fantastic colour. So, pleased with those. A few stingers in there, look. That's going to be another time for removal of all that. I was pleased to see so much blossom on my apple trees because these haven't fruited before so I'm hopeful I might get just a couple of apples on there and who knows maybe on there as well. But what I was really thrilled about today 
This tree is so covered in blossom that's now finished and I was waiting to see if any pears would set and sure enough there they are. Looks like we're going to have pears this season, fingers crossed, as long as they don't fall off. But when you look over the tree there is just so many clusters. It's going to be one large crop of pears if they work. There's some more there. And I notice there's some up there. So it's looking positive on the pears. And that would be great because last year of course we didn't have any because they didn't get pollinated. Good times. Well the soil under those trays that I had the flowers in is in good condition. It's nice and moist. I am going to put just a layer of compost on top. And I'm losing some depth in this raised box. Every year it naturally decomposes a little and shrinks a bit. So I think next year I'm probably going to have to refill it. But I'm trying not to do that because one of the things that carrots do is they go down for goodness. So if you've got a soil which is you know, pretty well used, then it does want to go down and look for goodness rather than spread out, which of course you don't want your carrots to do. So I'm going to put a little bit of compost in the top just so that I can sow into it and we'll go from there. Right, what have I got? I think I'll use this and give it a water. So this is just a layer just to sow into. And previously I've made quite deep holes and that's really helped to get the carrots to go down but this year I'm going to try something different I'm just going to sow and see if the carrots find their way down in a straight line without me making those for them we'll see all in the interest of experimentation okay a bit of water right I'm going to give this a bit of a soaking and then leave it just to settle down and then a little bit later on, I can start the carrot sowing. With compost like this, it's incredibly dry as this is. When you water like this, even though you put a lot of water on, it really doesn't just get penetrated down into the depths. It just sits on the top and if you later on just pick up a little bit of the soil, you'll see how it's dry only a couple of inches down below. So anyway, we'll let that soak in and then we'll be ready for some sowing. I've decided this is going to be my swede bed, or at least one of them, because I'm going to grow more swede or have grown more swede than I did last year. So I'm going to get the nets off this one. It does need weeding. We've got the ubiquitous mare's tail, which is always prevalent. So I'm just going to get that out best I can. You don't actually ever get rid of it. But if you can get down reasonably low and take a good amount of the root then will you just delay the time before it comes back in reality. And there's quite a lot in here. So I'll work my way through. I'll show you what I mean. Nice and low, and then sort of break it. And then you get some fairly long roots. Not, not huge, but that will prevent it from coming up for a little while anyway. Anything else there? Yeah, there is. So I'm going to go over the bed and do as much of that as I can. There's a good one. So if I can get that much out, I give myself a good chance. Right, round the bed. That's one sweet bed, ready. Just give them a bit of a water in. So there's about, I don't know, seven or eight inches between these. Not a lot, 
and it'd be interesting to see what size Swedes we get. Hopefully just lots of healthy ones, that's the main thing. But we're certainly going to have a few more than we had last year, which is great. And parsnips, hopefully will come through. And then you've got the main ingredients for stew, which we always like to eat a lot of, especially corned beef stew. Right, get the net back on here and then move on to the next. Well, I've decided this is going to be my beetroot bed and it's been a bit of a spur of the moment decision but my logic is I grew beetroot in there last year and swede in here so there's no reason why beetroot wouldn't grow in the same place twice with no dig gardening but what the hell why not have a change so this is where it's going to go and I've got three varieties and we'll get them in in three blocks just so that I can tell the difference and like the other beds I'm just going to do a quick weed although this has got very little mare's tail I can see two bits down there and there's a tiny little bit of cooch grass here which we'll have out it's just a broken piece that got in there and otherwise we're going to be going pretty quick me pretty much done for today. But last job I am gonna stand up this raspberry and if you're ever wondering why I put those retaining wires around my raspberry bed this is the reason. So once they get to a certain height they're very prone to just falling over. I'll tread carefully in here. So I'm gonna just put a stake in and get some ties around here so that this will stand up because if it doesn't then there's a good chance that all the fruit will be just swallowed up by a load of snails and slugs. There we are. I could stand that up and give it a chance. Well, if you enjoyed my video today then why not like and subscribe and get my uploads on a Wednesday and a Sunday at 8pm. Good times.